Yo, what's going on guys? It's Brev. Welcome to the very first episode of What Would Brev Do for MLB The Show 21. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you like the video, subscribe for more. The purpose of this series, we're going to be playing an entire ranked seasons game from start to finish, talking about what's going on in my head the entire time. We'll be posting a lot of these throughout the year, and we're also going to be doing some post commentaries. This one's obviously a live commentary, but a lot of educational stuff I have planned for you guys. Um, and that's a good segue. Just want to say this is the first episode. Get it out of the way. Oh, I guess yeah, I should show you guys my team. Um, the, the purpose of these videos is supposed to be educational more so than entertaining. This was kind of a problem when I started posting this last year. Uh, people found it boring at times and I can definitely understand that. Uh, but the purpose of the video is to help you guys get better in general. And it's hard to really get through everything I'm trying to say uh, as things are happening live. So just make sure you stick with me. This is my main account. This is the squad we're rocking with. We haven't really played much on this account uh, since the first week of release. We got Jackie Robinson early on, but we've been spending the majority of our time on our No Money Spent account. This is actually our other account. We're going to be pitching with Nolan Ryan. Do I think Nolan Ryan's great? Uh, maybe. Not really. Uh, he's more of an investment for me, and he's got full energy, so that's who we're rocking with. Our bullpen could use a lot of work, uh, but we've got Shane Green, Rob Dibble, Mo, and Billy Wagner available, so that should be good enough for this game in particular. So let's go ahead and search for ranked. We're currently at 854, so we do have the potential to uh, play a game on Legend, which would be interesting. Um, if you guys notice, I'm holding the left button here as I search for a game. This actually restricts your matchmaking. This only works in ranked seasons. It doesn't work in BR or events or anything. Uh, but I like to do this because it gives me the tightest matchmaking window. So I'll play someone relatively close to my rating. And so that means I'll win the most amount of points I can if I win. And I'll lose not as many points as I lose. Um, if I let the search bar extend really far and I queue into someone way below my rating, like 300 points, I might get 4 points for a win and lose like 40 if I lose. So um, that's why I do that. Game server closed our session. Let's not do this today, please. Um, also, you notice Nolan Ryan was our fourth starter, so this is something I brought up last year. It's not really as relevant considering we're pitching with our fourth starter. But sometimes people like to like listen to the game sound, and if they hear you pick your first pitcher, they'll just back out. Um, that guy probably backed out for other reasons. But if you're using like your first or second pitcher, I'll show you guys what it looks like. I really like to scroll around a bit before I pick the pitcher, just to kind of prevent that from happening. I know it's a small thing, maybe not relevant all the time, but just something to think about. So like if I was using Corbin Burns, I go down then up, so then it sounds like I'm pitching with my third guy. Stuff like that, man. This is a good start. <laughs> Please don't make me re-record this intro. Nah, it's fine. Um, servers have been pretty good for me recently, knock on wood. I don't know what the issue is so far. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying earlier, we're going to be doing a lot of live commentaries like this one. We did about 30 of these last year, and I'll be putting this video in the same playlist as those. So if you really want to go look back on the videos from MLB The Show 20, um, those will all be in the same playlist. A lot of the concepts are still relevant, but we'll talk about a lot of them here as well. Um, all right, we're finally in a game. Who are we matching up with? My face cam unfortunately blocks the away team starter. So that's a parallel three Corbin Burns that we're hitting against, and we're playing against a guy who has all the collections done. So this should be a good matchup, man. Uh, good test for Nolan Ryan. We're rocking the old school Tampa Bay Rays unis. I love this stuff, man. The late 90s, early 2000s unis they brought on this game this year are so dope. The Rays one's awesome. The Diamondbacks. Uh, maybe that's just because that was when I was growing up and I just dated myself. So here we are. All right, so he's pretty much got a God Squad. He's rocking the All-Star banner, ironically, I'm sure. <laughs> People like to do that to make it seem like they're bad when they're not. All right, so here's a concept with pitching. I usually like to pitch people with a rocking chair to start off. Pitching's going to be a little weird in this one, just because Nolan Ryan's control isn't the greatest, but we'll do our best. Uh, what I mean by rocking chair is I usually like to alternate fast and slow pitches early on. Um, the purpose of what we're trying to figure out is where our opponent's bat speed is at. So uh, he's swinging early there, or maybe that was perfect. Unfortunately, we give up a first inning bomb. Uh, but we can tell... Yeah, he's early. We can tell just from those three swings that his bat's going to be fast. So now we want to focus more on off-speed. Unfortunately, that cost us a run to figure out that information. Uh, but that's now four pitches in a row where our opponent is just sitting fastball, it looks like. So he's very capable of making the adjustment. But until he does, 
Uh, he's definitely going to be getting a high dose of off speed now. So, like I said, that really sucks that it only took us three pitches to really figure out what he's doing, and he still put up a run. Uh, but it is what it is. Fastballs down and away haven't been the greatest for me this year, honestly. I'm going to hit him with a fastball here just for a mix-up, and he might be a little bit embarrassed about that swing he just took. All right, so when people strike out really bad, <laughs> sometimes they either take a pitch or they sit on the opposite pitch that they struck out on because they're, you know, for lack of a better term, embarrassed. So that's why we were able to just drop in a fastball on him here, and then we're just right back to the off-speed. That wasn't really as believable of a curveball. Let's try a change up down. We're throwing him down a lot. Um, Nolan Ryan has some pretty decent up tunnels as well, but this guy is just selling out for fastball so hard so far this game um, that I really haven't really wanted to go up at all because he might accidentally have good timing on something up if I try to get cute with like off speed high in the zone. So we'll just stay down for now until he can prove to us that he can make the adjustment. This is kind of unfortunate. You don't. <laughs> this is not the most ideal way to pitch with Nolan Ryan. Um, you don't really get a Nolan Ryan card to spam changeups, but you know we're doing what we have to do, playing to our opponent. And uh, assuming he makes the adjustment here, at least by the end of the first inning, then we should be able to start using more fastballs and such. I'm gonna throw a fastball, but above the zone. This can get scary if they have perfect timing, but I just want to throw it for show. And he did end up chasing it late, so that was actually lucky for us that he struck out. Uh, good mix-up from us, and uh, he bailed us out by taking a bad swing. All right, Corbin Burns. So I'm basically gonna hit the same way he was, but I, hopefully I'm gonna be a little more controlled about it. Um, obviously, against Corbin Burns, his control's insane, and the majority of the time you're gonna be seeing sinker cutter. So uh, the beautiful thing about hitting against Corbin Burns is that his sinker and his cutter are basically the same speed, so as long as you keep a fast bat and react to off speed, you should be okay. There's the up and in sinker. Um, in the first inning, we're usually really patient as well. We're trying to figure out opponent tendencies. Honestly, that guy's sequence he just threw us was incredibly common, so that alone tells us a lot of information about how he's going to want to pitch to us. You can see a ton of sinkers arm side, a ton of cutters glove side. This is really, really common stuff. Uh, but yeah, against Corbin... We're trying to be patient. His stamina is not the greatest either. Um, you can work him out of the game early if you get his pitch count up high enough. Despite the fact that uh, pitch counts are a little bit bugged this year, people can pitch a lot longer than they could last year. Um, we'll see if he tries a backdoor cutter here. He threw an up and in sinker, and we were ready for it. Okay, so what I said was kind of the same thing, but just on the other side of the plate of what I was expecting. So very common with Corbin Burns. People pitching with him. By the way, Trent Grisham's a god. 31st home run for me on this account. <laughs> um, people love going to the doors when they have two strikes with Corbin Burns because you can because his control is so good. So people love uh, running cutters exactly where he just threw one right there. And then people also love running sinkers uh, kind of backdooring in over here. So uh, we were able to react to that pitch. Luckily, this game's on Hall of Fame. And... Uh, we know that he likes to do that as well. Last time, 2-2, he went up and in sinkers, so we have a very fast bat here. And he went up and away sinker. He might have missed his spot there. I can't imagine why he would go up and away to the same spot that I just crushed. Uh, I, I feel like he missed his spot. I think he was trying to go up and in sinker there. But immediately, back-to-back -back solo shots. And now I have the momentum. This should be a sinker here. All right, good on him. So that's a concept I've talked about last year also. Uh, when people start to get rattled or when people give up like back-to-back -back momentum shifting home runs, a lot of the time they'll just autopilot a primary pitch. Um, so I was sitting sinker there, kind of just cheesing on it, see if I could get away with one. There's the backdoor cutter. <laughs> this is the best start to the game ever. So that's what I'm talking about, man. Uh, Corbin's a weird one because he doesn't really have stuff that makes you chase, so you kind of have to go to the doors when you have two strikes. Um, and the best spots for that are sink or cutter, arm side, and sinker glove side. So you'll just, I don't know. After hitting against Corbin Burns enough times, I feel like you'll see the same stuff over and over. And even though we've been behind in the count every single at-bat so far, we've been able to react extremely well to just common pitch sequencing. Good pitch by him. We got very lucky there. That was a bad swing. Um, he did go change up in a two-strike count. He has not done that yet. So that was a very good mix-up for him, and we got lucky. Um, now I'm hunting first pitch sinker up and in. I missed. <laughs> All right, good mix-up, good mix-up. Uh, curveball right down the middle, and we suck. But 
Um, good on him. So it looks like, I don't know if those home runs have him rattled or if he's, you know, just pitching well. But uh, he's kind of straight away from sinker cutter in big spots so far. I want to talk about why I was so aggressive there with Keston and that at bat when I've been so patient so far. Um, obviously, some at bats have higher leverage than other at bats. The fact that we had somebody on first base there. And we had Keston Hira at the plate, who's a guy who has 117 power versus right for us now that he's paralleled. Um, it's a really good spot to just try to hunt for one pitch early in the count and try to let it rip. Uh, by the way, the 3-2 count to two outs, you should be sending the runner if there's a force play. Down and away slider. This looks like an out, I think. Oh, it did get down. So sending the runner helps us out there. Nice double off the wall for Salvi, and we're up 4-1. to one. That was a first-time slider for him, too. I felt like he should have gone up and in with the sinker again, and he might do that here as a regretting pitch. Dude, another first-pitch curve. Okay. <laughs> Sorry if this is all over the place. This guy is uh, keeping us on our toes kind of so far. But, yeah, going back to the Keston thing, I should have swung there. Uh, man, there's just so much going on. All right, we got to be aggressive here. There's that sinker with two strikes. We are under it. We get bailed out again, and he's gone. <laughs> Dang it, man. Yo, do I post an 11 minute what would Brev do? No, nah, we'll play another one and edit it. Sorry, guys. All right, I changed my mind. I'm not going to play another game, but what I am going to do, you're going to want to stick around. I'm going to roll through that gameplay post commentary and talk about the things that I wanted to say, but I just didn't have time to. So let's take a look at that first inning. There was a ton of stuff going on, a lot of things we could have done better, even honestly, and a lot of things we did really well. So let's take a look at that. And honestly, this is a pretty good first episode, man. Kind of just get our feet wet, even though it was less than an inning long. There was a lot of good concepts. So bear with me. And like I said, we'll be posting a ton of these throughout the year. So hopefully you guys learn something as we dive back into that game. All right. So here we are. Let's roll through this gameplay yet again. So like I was saying, when we were pitching with Nolan Ryan, um, I like to pitch with rocking chair early on, which means mixing speeds, fast, slow, fast, slow. Um, but like I said, when the game was happening, we figured out very quickly that the, our opponent had, was just keeping a fast bat and sitting fastball against Nolan, which honestly is probably the way to hit against him, especially if you haven't seen him much. So this down and away fastball does end up going yard for an early swing. That's okay. Um, I felt like I got through a lot of what I wanted to say when I was pitching early on. I mean, there wasn't much to say. Our opponent was just incredibly aggressive with his bat speed and we just kept spamming off speed to make him adjust and eventually we got out of the inning with a high fastball actually so I guess I can talk about that pitch. Um, really the purpose of that pitch which I think is the one after this one was to get him it was really just a mix-up pitch we were immediately gonna go back to uh, the changeup below the zone but we actually got lucky in that he just chased it for us and kind of bailed us out there um, so that was really just a pitch for show and sometimes it's important to do that especially when you're ahead in the count uh, but really what I want to dive into with this gameplay is the entire first inning. Obviously we hit very well, uh, but we got extremely lucky with some of our PCI placement as well. I should have said this earlier, but my hitting style is could be considered like passive aggressive. Like I was trying to say during the gameplay, um, some at bats are a lot more high leverage than others. I'm really trying to be patient, figure out opponent pitch tendencies. And then uh, once I get base runners on, that's when I try to turn it up and be aggressive because a home run could be worth two, three, four runs as opposed to just one run um, if you guess right when there's nobody on base. So uh, I want to talk about our opponent's sequencing here. It was very, very common. I would imagine a lot of you guys who are facing Corbin Burns a lot will see stuff like this. Um, immediately, cutter down and away to a righty, sinker inside to a righty. You will see that all the time. Um, incredibly common he probably tried to throw that for a strike as well or maybe just to see if we would chase and then immediately back to the sinker inside and then 2-2 two -two count um, he does go up and in with the sinker and gets a swing late so that's an incredible pitch that's so hard to hit especially when I'm not looking for it but I can use that information moving forward um, to know that he may go sinker in two strike counts which obviously we did again cutter arm side sinker glove or sorry cutter glove side sinker arm side very very common I forget what he threw here. Change it below the zone. Okay, so we've learned a lot so far here, right? Um, he's throwing very common cutter pitches, very common sinker pitches to try to get ahead in the count. Um, both at-bats so far, the third pitch of the at-bat 
has him trying to chase us below the zone to see where our bat speed's at maybe or where our plate discipline is at so that is useful information obviously this is all stuff that i'm processing as the game is happening um, that i don't really have time to talk about during the gameplay um, immediately back to that spot he struck us out with buxton um, and i want to keep a fast bat here because so far he has stuck with sinker cutter for the majority of the time our bat was extremely fast there and he actually threw a really good pitch a slider inside we got lucky to foul that off um, our opponent maybe did a little bit of a mistake here uh, you can see by me swinging just early at this slider and honestly this is a pretty decent swing all things considered in a two strike count um, I probably would have tried to go change up our curveball here another off-speed pitch just to make sure my bat speeds not fast and that I'm still slowing it down instead he does try to go to the doors so this is what I talked about during the gameplay um, Corbin Burns is actually kind of a weird pitcher in that it's hard to strike people out once you're ahead in the count. He's a great pitcher at getting ahead in the count because he can dot the corners all day. Uh, but once you're there, he doesn't really have like a put away pitch. Uh, he doesn't have a straight four seam. He doesn't have like a like a slider that's slower than his other pitches significantly. Um, and so really very often, as I was trying to say, um, people's two strike pitches will be cutters that start outside and break in. A lot of people throw them low and then sinkers that start over here and break into the plate. A lot of people throw them high. So that is indeed what he decides to go with here. Um, if, the, if it's your first time seeing that pitch and you take it for a strike three, do not worry. Um, the reason I was so ready for that is because I've seen it so many times already. I've, for some reason, the stats don't make any sense, um, but I swear I've played probably 30% or more of my ranked games all year against Corbin Burns so far. Um, so this is actually a spot where we could have been aggressive here. I think I was uh, talking, so I wasn't, but um, a concept I talked about during the game as well is that people, after momentum shifting home runs or when they're kind of just rattled on the mound, they'll do one of two things. They'll either just autopilot a primary pitch, um, and you can kind of tell that they're doing this because they pick their pitch really quickly after the like home run cut scene is over with. Um, so it's very common to see a sinker in this spot. I don't know what he threw here. He did throw a sinker. so. Sinker is Corbin Burns' primary pitch. For some reason, it's just subconsciously easier to just pick a primary pitch and go uh, when you're rattled or you're frustrated. So we could have been aggressive there. We wouldn't have done anything with that pitch, but um, sometimes it's good to, uh, to sit primary pitch after a big home run like that too. Um, so let's see what he goes back to the sequencing here. I don't really remember this Jackie Robinson at bat too much. There's that um, front door cutter as it is to a righty and then slider. So now he's trying to mix in more off speed. Uh, this should be a sinker, I would assume. No, slider again. Okay, so slider, so he went sinker, cutter, slider, slider, and then this is the up and away sinker. So my bat is super fast here, um, not because I was looking for the pitch that he actually threw to us, but because I was looking for the pitch right here. So the obviously, when Buxton was at the plate, the first at bat of the game, we had a 2-2 count. He busted us up and in with a sinker, perfect pitch. We had no chance, it was a terrible swing. So it's perfectly reasonable to expect somebody to go back to that. I don't know if he missed his spot, like I said during the game, uh, but thankfully he threw it up and away, which gave us time to react. And I just absolutely adore this 99 Jackie Robinson card, man. He is. So insane, we've almost got him to parallel four, which means he's gonna have diamond defense at second base with 99 speed, uh, which is amazing. Another spot where we could be aggressive here with Votto, I think I did swing first pitch here. Can't quite remember. Yeah, I was sitting sinker there. So I talked about that during the game, so I won't mention it here. But you can see now that uh, we've crushed a couple of sinkers, he's incorporating more off speed, especially early in, early in the count, which is a good thing for him to be doing. Uh, we take that curveball. Honestly, that's just practice. It wasn't a great tunnel either. Uh, big loop right around here. Uh, nothing's really believable except for a slider that's hung, which you're probably not going to see O2 unless they really mess up. Uh, so that was a pretty easy take there for us. And again, we're keeping a fast bat. We're trying to protect against sinker cutter because, like I said, in two strike counts, people are going to try to go to the doors or like right on right. They're going to try to bust you up and in with sinkers. I've seen people bust you up and in with cutters against lefties as well a lot. So um, the reality is that uh, Corbin's pitches besides sinker cutter aren't really that great, especially the changeup is like really not that good of a pitch at all. And uh, really why the card is so good is because of his control and the fact that you can throw sinkers and cutters wherever you want. So just as general advice against Corbin Burns, probably best to uh, just sit sinker cutter, try to keep a fast bat. There's our lucky swing, swing an early and an away changeup that uh, should have been a ground out to second base probably. 
But yeah, hitting against Burns, his sinker and cutter are the same speed. And uh, yeah, it's probably good just to sit on that stuff. So let's talk about this Keston Hero at bat, which I try to get out um, during the gameplay. So we now have a runner on first. We haven't had a base runner actually all game yet because we've hit three solo shots. Uh, our opponent's clearly rattled. Um, he's not pitching well. So this is again a spot where we could see a, just an autopilot primary pitch. Also, Keston Hira crushes right-handed pitching, tons of power. Um, if we ground into a double play here, that sucks, but uh, really what we're looking for, we're keeping a fast bat, we're looking sinker, we're looking for it high up and in, maybe for like a comfort spot here. I forget what he threw, he did throw a curveball and hung it. So we kind of outthunk ourselves there, but um, that's really common that you'll see, especially like realistically, the only pitch that he's had a ton of success on against me so far this inning was that sinker up and into a righty. So that's why I'm being aggressive there because a home run is worth two rather than one because we have a runner on first base. Um, we have the perfect guy at the plate to hit a home run with how much power Keston Hira has against right-handed pitching and the fact that I think he might go to his comfort spot of the up and in sinker, which is the only thing that has worked for him all game. Um, so he did not do that, but that's what I was thinking during the game. So back to the common stuff, cutter glove side, he's been throwing it down mostly. Um, up cutters glove side are also pretty good, just as, an, as advice for pitching with Corbin Burns, because they tunnel well with sinkers up. Um, he goes back to us inside there, 3-0. And uh, I think he battles back to 3-2 here. So this is information. We're never swinging here. Um, well, maybe 3-1 we could swing. I think it was talking also. But 3-0, I'm never swinging. And this is an opportunity to gather information as well. Again, we're just logging things throughout the game. This is why we're patient in the first inning. We're trying to pick up on tendencies, figure out what they like to do. 3-0, um, he just barreled in a sinker right down the middle and 3-1 he went sinker again so although we let him battle back 3-2 now we have information um i could have swung 3-1 there although that was a much better spot than the 3-0 pitch that he threw maybe better to just take that and then 3-2 again you want to send the runner in these situations there's no downside and he did go slider down and away not really what we were expecting again but easy to react to because again corbin burns besides sinker cutter i don't think his pitches are that great and he did slightly miss his spot a little bit. I'm sure he would have liked to have that more towards the corner than where he threw it. Um, just lucky there. Another spot where we could be aggressive here. This is actually one of the things I wanted to talk about in this post -com. This Justin Turner at bat, we played horribly. Um, <laughs> and you're probably laughing because this at bat ended in a two-run home run. But honestly, we didn't deserve it with our PCI placement. Uh, but I want to talk about the game state right here. So again, he's probably rattled. Uh, so we want to sit sinker first pitch, but um, this is a very common game state that you'll see pretty often. So it's uh, two outs, eight hole hitter, and a runner in scoring position. So um, the correct thing to do from a pitcher's perspective is to intentionally walk me here. The reason is I'm never going to take out my starting pitcher in the first inning. Um, obviously, you can basically sacrifice, you know, Maybe he wants to pitch to Justin Turner and just see if I can lead off next inning with the pitcher. But if it were me, I would intentionally walk Justin Turner here uh, just to ensure that I get out of the inning only down 4-1. to one. Instead, he decides to pitch to us. So this, in my opinion, is a misplay. And I was talking during the gameplay, but I should have been hyper, hyper aggressive in this at bat. This is a class of case of an at bat where you basically just want to swing at anything in the zone. The reason is if we get a base hit, we're basically scoring another run. Um, and we're avoiding a situation where maybe he falls down 1-0, 2-0, and then he decides to walk us. Um, so if he doesn't intentionally walk us immediately, um, we need to be hyper aggressive here and basically swing in at anything in the zone, try to maximize the value of this Justin Turner at bat. So we should have been hacking here, absolutely. Um, that's an amazing pitch to swing at first pitch. We should have probably seen it coming too, considering he threw a curveball to Keston. Um, that's a good take, honestly, although I was probably taken all the way. And then this is the pitch I really, really messed up on, man. Um, with this situation and the fact that he should be pitching around us, uh, the fact that I took this pitch is just disgustingly bad. Um, we should have been up 6-1 to one on that pitch and not the next one. Um, so just really bad by me. <laughs> My apologies. But just wanted to point out this game state. This happens a lot. Uh, where they could have a lot of benefit walking you to get to your pitcher and if they don't do that You need to take advantage by trying to be hyper aggressive and trying to get a base hit to bring this run in um, Another two strike count again, although he's kind of straight away from it The last couple of bats were trying to keep a fast bat once again this entire inning Essentially the only pitch he's had success on was the right on right up and in sinker with two strikes um, So he does throw us in the inside sinker. It wasn't up 
but we were kind of ready for it. We were late sided good uh, and way under the ball. Uh, again, didn't deserve a home run, but that's just what I was thinking throughout the gameplay. Um, my apologies for this first episode being only one inning long, but I hope you guys learned a lot. And like I said, it's a good episode to kind of get our foot in the door. Uh, believe me, we will be posting tons of these throughout the year, and there will be tons of them that go with nine innings and tons of really intense gameplay. So um, I really like this episode just to kind of get our core concepts out of the way in episode one. And then moving forward, we'll get a lot deeper into games and a lot deeper into thought processes and uh, keeping track of pitch sequences throughout the course of seven, eight, nine innings. It's going to be really fun. But hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Hope it was helpful. Stay tuned for more. Appreciate you guys. Take care. I'll see you next time.